Today, I have something interesting to share. The EaseI Radian, a portable trans-reflective LCD monitor designed for use in direct sunlight and low light conditions, thanks to layered screen technology. So let's quickly break down what trans-reflective actually means. Most of you are familiar with e-ink, which is reflective, which means it reflects light, but doesn't have a backlight. Transreflective screens, on the other hand, also function as reflective displays under bright conditions like outdoors in sunlight, but they're also capable of transmitting backlight through the transreflective layer in darker settings. So they work like a judicial monitor in these surroundings. So why opt for this instead of E? Well, because despite Ing's advantages, it faces limitations such as slow refresh rates and issues with calisaturation and ghosting. These can be significant trade-offs for certain use cases. So let's check out whether the ESA Radiant addresses the shortcomings. But before doing so, I just wanted to mention that the review unit was provided by EaseEye with no strings attached, so they didn't have any inputs on the contents of this video and didn't see it beforehand. The Radiant is available through crowdfunding, so you can check out the campaign page to get more details on the product. Find a link in the description below. The monitor itself is built with an all aluminum body and fits incredibly nice to the touch and also fits very sturdy which also has something to do with the somewhat heavy weight of just over a kilo. It features a 15.6 inch full HD screen and supports connectivity through mini HDMI and USB-C. There are also stereo speakers on the back, a headphones jack on the side and a control switch to adjust a couple of settings. These I provided two different stands with the unit, one smaller and more compact, the other larger and more stable, both adjustable, which will be important later on. I had to loosen larger ones slightly to make adjustments easier though, because it was almost impossible out of the box. The first thing I noticed when turning the Radiant on for the first time was the greenish tint of the backlight, which actually isn't a flaw, but part of the technological approach because the East Eye Radiant has a full spectrum LED backlight, which means it covers a wider range of the electromagnetic spectrum than a normal backlight typically does. So it aims to mimic natural light more closely than your typical backlight. And because I reviewed TCN Next Vapor devices in the past, and I didn't have any way to check the company's promises on the reduced blue light emissions, this time around I got a light spectrometer to check those claims. So this is what it looks like when checking the light on a cloudy day. You can see the natural daylight spectrum is broad. By checking out the typical display, like the one on my Lenovo laptop, it looks like this. You can see there's a huge spike in shorter wavelengths with a relatively huge blue light emission spike. Not all displays look exactly like this, but it's not uncommon. And now let's check out the East Eye Radian. That one has a different pattern with a lot more green and red to the mix. There are still these spikes in various wavelengths, but blue is less pronounced relative to the others. So in short, this backlight should be more comfortable to use in the long run. Whether blue light is really harmful or not, there's no consensus on that yet but better safe than sorry in my opinion. So I appreciate the no compromise approach by getting this type of backlight for best possible eye care, even if it means that you have to compromise a bit on color fidelity. But luckily we can adjust the colors a bit by changing the red, green, and blue portions of the image, making this greenish tint a little less pronounced. But it's not just a backlight rating this effect, but also the viewing angle. Reflective and Grand's reflective LCDs don't have the same viewing angle stability as a regular LCD. The easy fix for that is looking at the screen at the red angle, which is a bit tilted when having it right in front of you. The main benefit over e-ink when looking at contents like this, that it's simply much quicker. So this is a much better viewing experience when it comes to any type of fast paced content. The maximum brightness when using the backlight averages at around 27 nits, 
which isn't super bright, but still bright enough for indoor use. For comparison, I typically run my desktop monitors at 38 nits. Using the Radiant indoors, you pretty much have to use the backlight all the time. I'd say a setting of 30% is the minimum to comfortably work with it in my experience, which adequates to around 7 nits, which isn't much and actually half of what my 24-inch Dell monitor can dial down to in its dimmest setting. So if I care is what you're looking for when working indoors, this can be an interesting solution with its full spectrum backlight. However, the main drawbacks here are definitely the viewing angle stability and the reflections on the front glass if you're sitting in a well-lit room. Okay, that's what the Radiant looks like indoors. Let's check it out what it's like to use it outdoors, which is really the main selling point here in my opinion. With looking at it at the right angle, you can easily see everything on the screen without any issues. Same as indoors, tilting a screen is key here because otherwise it's reflective front glass can be in the way. If you ask yourself why it didn't use a matte screen, I ask myself the same question. So I got a matte screen protector to give it a try. And while that helps a lot with the reflections, contrast levels suffer as a result and readability actually got a lot worse in my opinion. So even though it also used fingerprints considerably, it wasn't really worth it in the end. I also asked Ezai about it and they essentially told me the same thing. So last year I was in Portugal and sitting on a porch out in the sun using my MacBook Air here. And at one point the 500 nits maximum brightness were actually simply too dim to continue using it. With their Radiant, that wouldn't have been an issue. What you can't do with the screen, however, is graphics work because even though it's reflective, it's crushing darker colors. So the screen generally works best with lighter colors, in my opinion. A huge advantage for real world portability is the possibility to just run this monitor of a single USB-C cable on compatible devices. So just the monitor and the USB-C cable are enough to get this thing running on the MacBook Air or even Samsung Galaxy phone. So I'd say the Radiant the Chiefs its main goal of providing good, high-friendly outdoor viewing experience. And I really like using it as an extension of my Samsung phone with tech support. That's really a pretty efficient solution on what you have to pack actually. Just the display, the phone, and the USB-C cable. But I also recommend packing a power bank in that case, because even though the screen is reflective, it's an additional display your phone has to power. So let's also quickly talk about what didn't work so well in my test, like the touch screen support on the MacBook Air. It sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, but bottom line is Mac OS isn't optimized for touch input. So even when a touch screen is recognized, it's not a great experience, but that's not really the fault of the Radian and simply something macOS is lacking. What's also not a great experience is the monitor settings menu because that little switch right here on the side to navigate through the menu really starts to get uncomfortable on a fingertip when tinkering with the settings for a bit. You can also use the touch screen for that as well. But same as before, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time when a device is connected, the touch screen in the menu didn't work for me. These stereo speakers on the back are nice to have, but truth be told, they aren't the greatest. So if I played back audio, I kept the output set to my phone or the MacBook. Those definitely sound a lot better. One thing you notice when using is green outdoors and looking at it at certain angles is this pattern right here. You might have already noticed it as well. Not a huge deal and it doesn't hurt usability in my opinion. Just worth pointing out. Same is true for what I suspect is a pre-production issue. This LED flickering right here in the middle of the screen like something is pushing against the LCD. That's visible when applying a little force to the screen. What's one of the biggest drawbacks in my opinion is the reflectivity of the front glass and how easily it attracts fingerprints. You can work around it, but I felt this was the most annoying thing when using the monitor. To sum it up, the main thing that you need to be aware of 
before getting this monitor is that fueling anger stability is a compromise you need to be willing to make for the eye-friendly and outdoor viewability, and also that color accuracy isn't on the same level as your typical SED, but definitely better than on the EAM screen at the moment. For indoors use, I'd say the full spectrum LED backlight is a plus, but rateability isn't all that great compared to other technologies. So even though it worked fine overall, because of the somewhat strong reflections, I'd mainly stick to the outdoors with this one. So all in all, I think this can actually be a pretty awesome, specialized, and also expensive solution for people who want to use their laptop mainly outdoors and are willing to compromise on a few points. If that's you, check out the crowdfunding page to learn more about it. Like and subscribe if you found this review helpful. Thanks for time watching and see you in the next one.